Sure enough, they leave. I hear f footsteps in the hallway. This, as I said, is, is an apartment. I open my bedroom door. My bedroom door. Look out. Fear of public speaking is known as glossophobia. According to the British Psychological Society, the statistics show that the percentage of the population that suffers from any kind of speech anxiety is as high as 75%. Effective use of public speaking can make the difference between a leader inspiring their countrymen or embarrassing their nation. The lack of confidence required to present a speech or just achieve everyday tasks can often be so crippling that it can destroy lives. The ability to do what is necessary to hold down a job or other simple everyday tasks such as making friends is often taken for granted by the general public. Toastmasters is a public speaking group where members can come together to hone their skills in a friendly environment. Here is a story about one person's lack of confidence and its origin. I came to Toastmasters for self-confidence. Being a, a carer of um, a special needs young man who's in a wheelchair, I always pushed Jordan to the front as opposed to me being there. And eventually you start shrinking away because you've got the... You, you're improving someone else, so you've been a carer. And by that time you lose contact with other people because your focus is somewhere else. So for, for me, I came just with a bit of comf confidence. Come out and socialise. Jordan currently is in college for three years over in Harrogate and now it's my time to get out and have a bit of fun. And I found Toastmasters is one of the ways for it. When I was younger, I was heart and soul of the party. And then suddenly you grow up. When I was 20 year old, Jordan was born. So, in that process, he had a, a year in the hospital. And suddenly all your friends disappear because they all continue on their life. But at 20 year old, 20 year olds don't want to be talking about children, what hardship that your children might be having, and really they want to enjoy life. When he was born, it was a 2080 theory, a 2080 chance of living. So he had 20% 20, 20, 20 chance of living. A lot of people quit. I'm not prepared to quit. I could be at the bottom and I'll still work my way back up. Going back to Jordan, I think I helped Jordan survive the positivity. Uh, he used to sit, sit, sit with him at the side of hospital bed. At the time, he was, when he was first born, he was two pound four ounces. He was 28 weeks gone, so he was three months premature. From there to there was the size of him. It sort of happened too fast. And then, you make your commitment. I will not confess that I didn't make a prayer, but if you're asking for something, be careful what you ask for, because you get it, in most cases. And his survival was one of them. So that was my commitment to him. Sitting down and reading, reading a book to him, of a, um, Christmas, uh, well, sounds daft when you, when you read to um, a young man or a baby in a uh, hospital that big, a book, just continuously. I always thought, well, as long as he can hear and he's always got the input coming in, he'll survive. And with that, everything vanishes off and I give me life away. So in that process, I um, lacked my self-esteem, my self-confidence, 
because I always push someone else forward. And Toastmasters has turned that around for me. It's made me more confident than what I have been. I didn't realise I'd lost my confidence, but yet people that you speak, who know me, who speak to me, never thought, would never know that I had lost any confidence. But it's only the inner side. It's, you see, I, I was in the, oh, and I still am, in the mistake of being a carer means your life is over. And I've realised, being a carer, your life isn't over. It's just different. You just view things differently. Getting over this fear or a lack of confidence is the hardest part for a public speaker. In order to tackle this demon, members must face it head on by constant practice. However, with a busy schedule, working two jobs, Michael must integrate practice with everyday life. When I, when I was organising this speech, I thought about where would I practice. And I have a little Jack Russell, Russell dog, Layla the caller. She's so big and she's much short legged. So I take her around a park called Rounder Park. And to practice my speeches, I used to speak and use the actions. And then one day, someone kept on looking at me, a bit strange. A bald-headed geezer walking around, Le uh, well, around Roundy Park, speaking with his hands up. So I decided I won't look any stranger than anybody else. So I took my phone out, put it to me here, and went like that. And how many people do you see in Leeds or in the world just talking like that? People, half of people don't even realise they're doing it. In times of adversity, the future can be the only thing we know we are getting for certain. All fears can be overcome with the right attitude. Michael is one of these people who has the right attitude. We must take on the future at full speed with the best goals and aspirations to help us succeed. Let's go now and have a look at what Michael's plans for the future are. The mindset yourself, if you believe in yourself and want to do stuff and go for it, then you'll achieve it. Anything I put in is anything I get out. The more I can progress on, the more I can communicate. I've grown a lot in the Toastmasters organisation in the Toastmaster organisation. I feel more confident being able to speak with people that I wouldn't normally put myself in that circle. Yeah, I'm going somewhere because of the Toastmasters. Where the road takes me, I do not know. But opportunities come up when you least expect them and you just seize them. Where am I going? Plain answer is forward and upwards. <laughs>